Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is a study after Frederick Cost. It's, uh, the painting from him is called Autumn. And I completed this one over the weekend. And um, it had to go through uh, a, a not so even really second pass. I couldn't get it all done in one day so you'll see a little bit of a flatness in the color um, somewhere around say the 10 minute mark don't let that throw you um, it's just the matteness of the dry paint that I'm working over so um, the uh, the truest uh, way that you can see is if you see the uh, the thumbnail from the intro uh, of the video that's that's where the paintings really at Anyway, um, Frederick Cost, you know what? I know nothing about this guy. He's totally slipped under my radar. I really like this particular um, scene, though. And um, I'll point out in the members area, there's a whole section uh, with a um, all the color mixing and showing his uh, the original reference image. And I think it pops up to around that 10 minute mark it went again. Um, but you can find it real easy on Google Images. It's Frederick Cost if you feel like painting along. And of course, if you feel like painting along, uh, best thing to do is uh, just join the membership area and uh, you'll have everything at a natural pace instead of the sped up pace. Yeah. Um, let's get into some... Uh, oh, before I get into some biographical stuff about Fred, <laughs> we're on familiar terms, Fred and I, uh, I'd like to point out that I changed the proportions of his painting a bit. Uh, made it a little more um, skinny because um, the proportions I'm using is that doubled up square. This is a 7 by 14 and um, his was a, like more like it would have been, I even know it was much bigger, but if it was to be the same scale, uh, it would have been like an 8 by 14 or something like that. So I squished it a bit and you really can't tell and it's all good. Also, I always take liberties with um, when I make a study, I take all the artistic liberties that I want. Um, I'm after getting a good likeness and, and representation of the, um, the painting I'm doing a study after. Um, but there are times, if there's things that bother me color-wise or compositionally, I don't just copy them. I don't do that. Um, not that much bothered me in this one, but I can't say I love all of Fred's work. Um, I do like quite a few things, and I really like this painting a lot. It had a real fresh feel. Anyway, we're going to read you a bit right now from, uh, this is from uh, artsy.net. Uh, this is a bio they've got. Frederick Cost, tonalist landscapes are never far from the sea, encompassing the tidal marshlands of his early home on Staten Island after 90, 1900. The stretches of inlets and wetlands of Long Island's Great South Bay but it costs work the subjects are less about place and more about spirit of place. Hey, we share that in common, Fred. Where the worn paths meander and harvest awaits gathering. Costs more expressive mature work, especially his smaller sketchy paintings on wood panel, displayed a pronounced gestural handling of pigment, focused more in symbolic form, tree shapes, meandering stream banks, and cloud formations than that often approach two dimensional design. He really does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tree shapes meandering uh, further enhanced the artist's sumptuous vibrant surface tonalities, which he attempted to translate emotional states into paint in the vein of his personal idol, George Ness. Well, that's another thing we have in common, Fred. I love George Ness too. And I've got, oh, we just did the George Ness study. I'm working on another one, though. Yeah, it's looking real good, yeah. Anyway, um, Let's talk about some of the challenges of doing this. Uh, uh, well, painting around those trees like I'm doing there, that's always a bit of a challenge, but I have a strategy for that. And uh, you may have noticed that it's like go in and do a drawing stage um, and get some semi-darks in and then I pop in darker darks, you know. And then I go in and paint the sky, and then I finish the tree shapes over the sky. That's my strategy, and it has served me very well, I have to say. Yeah, um, I was finding some aspects of the clouds a little fiddly, but I managed to keep it fresh. And if you're doing studies after the masters, if you're not, and you're a painter, and you want to get better, um, 
I'm not saying you should do studies after me, you know, because I'm just in a, a guy trying to get better too. Um, but go after the masters, you know, go after the greats. Uh, and, and that's whoever you think is great. I think George Ines is great. I've done a study after every major Ines painting, in some cases three times on some of them. Um, another one I really like is uh, Francis Murphy, uh, John Francis Murphy. I've done many, many studies after his work. And Charles Warren Eaton as well. And then Corot. That's my top four, I would say. Um, and lots of other guys, too. Um, you know, Dupree. I've done quite a few after him. Uh, you know, all kinds of guys. Anyway, <clears throat> when you do the study, try really treat it like your painting. Hold on. Sorry, dog's getting ready to bark. He's got the wind. He's at the window. Sorry about that. Bing, I told you, you better be good, or I'm gonna kick you out. Yeah, he gets all cute. Like, oh, look, here's my tummy. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. Um, but you want to keep your study fresh. It's really a tendency a lot of times to, you know, in the process of trying to get everything correct, you get everything super tight. And you'll lose that feeling or quality that it was the master had in their work because it's very seldom that the work of masters is what you would call tight. Uh, that's not something that... Um, Ma masters tend not to paint that way. They tend, then that doesn't mean everything they do is falling apart, that it's so loose. But um, a big part of it, achieving mastery is being able to express yourself um, without getting overly, um, you know, tweaky. Uh, and with landscape, I'm talking about landscape painting, of course, but it's true of most any form of painting. Uh, you can see we saw there's a shift right so that's the next day uh everything else i did previously i threw everything i had at it, it was a couple hours and then um i went ahead and finished the grass but you can see the colors not as fresh you're just looking at the paint a little matte that's all yeah it's all good you still get a real good idea what i was doing um that's another thing you know <clears throat> Some days you've got more uh, uh, like personal power than other days as an artist, right? Some days you could go five hours. Other days you might be good for one hour. Um, usually I'm good for about two to three hours of painting in a day, you know. Um, definitely an hour is never a problem. And um, hour and a half, what, what have you. But I will say pay attention to, like, don't. It's good to push yourself um, as a painter, but the way you need to push yourself as a painter is to work every day. Uh, not so much that once you sat down to work that you're pushing yourself to do hour after hour after hour of painting. Now, it might be that you're riding on a high and everything's going great. Um, and you can paint for six to eight hours in a day. I've done it before. I could, I could even, well, maybe not eight, but you know, uh, there have been times, especially say if I'm doing like lots of little five by sevens, I could, I think I've done really, you know, a bunch of five by sevens in a day before, uh, depending on say, maybe it's just simple, uh, uh, earth tone paintings or things like that. It really all depends. Anyway, be sensitive to when you start getting a bit um, fatigued, and that fatigue I'm talking about isn't necessarily that you're tired or sleepy. It's just that you're going, uh, and your focus is slipping, and your concentration is slipping. And what will happen if you keep going um, too far is you'll just make a bunch of mistakes, and it'll add up to a bad painting. And the world doesn't need another bad painting. The world is full. Of many many bad paintings and even studies you know now when it comes to studies uh, Frederick Costi died oh I had another bio I had another bio for you because that one was light on real facts it was all uh, he was born in New York City he was born in May 1861 and he passed away February 23rd 1923 and uh, the son of German immigrants and um, cost a good German name. Anyway, that's some, it doesn't get into his education or anything like that. But um, Okay, so you can see this is my third painting uh, session. Uh, I had just like maybe 40 minutes to do that grass. 
and now I'm going to go in and finish up the grass a bit and you get a good look at the uh, the reference image there yeah and I'm uh, happy to share that as always yeah um, and you know okay so what was the other stuff I was challenged with well one thing it worked out well is because I the sky was dry by the time I got to doing all this tree stuff that was over and it was a piece of cake you know um, uh, I took an approach like there's a bunch of trees in the background when you have that sort of thing to deal with um, to me a really good approach is to treat them like darker versions of the clouds and that's something you'll see people like John Francis Murphy do a lot and Ines for that matter although Ines's approach to it's quite abstract at times um, you know also uh, when you're doing these little branches and things I was pretty faithful to what he did and this is one of the few cases where I broke out a round um, and it was actually a synthetic round which is something I hardly ever use but it was the perfect brush for uh, doing this sort of stuff that I'm doing here which is just little branches little leaves and it's good to know when um, you know, you're not going to be able to pull something like that off, maybe wet on wet. I maybe could have. Who knows? It's hard to say, but I didn't have to. Um, here, too, you know, don't don't feel like you got to paint every twig and every leaf and everything in the exact same place that the, the, the artist you're doing a study after did. That is not good practice. Good practice is to get the feeling across. And someone's going to look at this and look at the cost and and briefly go, yeah, that looks like the Frederick cost. And then if you you get get in and start getting real um, examining about it, you go, oh, well, he didn't paint that, he didn't paint that, he didn't paint. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter um, because I created an attractive painting based on Fred's painting. I learned a lot, um, mostly because uh, the differences in his approach as compared to to what I normally do. And that stuff, uh, that's the great thing about doing studies is that you'll expand what it is you do um, in the process of trying to sort of do what other people do. And it's really the fastest way to get super good. What I don't recommend you do is like doing nothing but studies. I never even did a study after a master until I'd been painting for like six years or so, you know. But... I wish I'd started a bit sooner, to be honest. And if I if I could go back, and I would have started doing studies after the ma masters, right when I first started painting. But what I don't recommend you do is nothing but studies. Uh, you have to um, start building up your own way of interpreting nature, um, and this, the masters can really inform it. And here's the analogy: M many of people follow the channel. You've heard me use this over again, over and over again. This is like a cover song, okay? It's like a cover tune. It's my take on his song, you know? And um, sometimes the cover can even be better, right? Um, anyway, we're getting close to the end of the video. Now, I, you, maybe some of you noticed on the last video, I have a like buy now thing. And um, I'm going to be doing that for, I'm going to try and do that for every painting I'm doing, mostly because uh, the COVID situation out here has really impacted my sales. I have no. Um, tourists coming into my studio anymore and even was getting a lot of tourists up from the Auckland area but that's been on lockdown and stuff so that's had a real impact on my business not crying or anything and you're certainly under no obligation to uh, support me although if you do want to support me a uh, membership is great that's a real reasonable um, six bucks a month uh, or donation there's a button on my site or uh, my favorite way to be supported is when people buy my paintings because I have a lot of paintings and uh, I like to get them into people's homes and it's really not a complete, it doesn't really complete the circuit until it's hanging on someone's wall and they're enjoying it, you know. Anyway, uh, the price on this one, I'm guessing, uh, well I'm not guessing, I'm just going to decide right now. I'm going to go for uh, 350 US on this, including international shipping. And that's a really good price, but um, hey, you know, I'm interested in making a, a, making it irresistible for you. Anyway, there'll be a link under the video, so go ahead and follow that. And thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks for your patience with my uh, sales pitch there, you know. It's, I, I don't do this for, for that reason, but it's it's good. We all need, you know, 
dinero for the bills, right? Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Uh, do your best to love your enemies. And uh, while you're doing that, take good care, stay out of trouble, and God bless you.